All right, Shalom, Israel, Shalom, Shalom. Uh, this is Brother Obadiah from New Wine Congregation. And you know, first and foremost, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of who the world calls God. By Hashem just means in the name of. And Yahweh Shai is the true name of who the world calls Jesus Christ. And it's going to be a short video through the Spirit. It's a very important video, though, man. This video is for a lot of our brothers and sisters that want to, um, and you know who you are, you know what I'm saying? You know who you are, but this video is for a lot of brothers and sisters that want to join hand-to-hand -hand with the oppressor, you know, that want to be like the so-called white man or white woman, that want to act like them, that want to talk like them, that want to interracial, interracial marriage with them. It's, this is going to be a very important topic because this topic is not talked about in the Christian church. You're not going to hear nobody, your auntie, your uncle, your, your mama, your daddy, they more than likely not going to talk about this topic. They're not going to tell you that you need to separate from your enemies. They're not going to tell you that. right? They're going to make you think, well, love is love. Equality, that's what America teach. Equality, one nation under God. We are taught these things, but we're not truly taught about the Bible. You know, We're not truly taught about what the Bible actually says because you have a lot of our people. Um, we have a lot of our people that hate their own people. It's that Uncle Ruckus spirit off Boondocks. They hate their own people, bro. They talking down upon their people. Um, they they tend to forget, especially when sometimes when some of our people get money and move to the white neighborhoods, they tend to forget that they're so-called black still. Cause they get around all these white people. Then they forget about their own people. They start talking down upon their people to the so-called white people. They start they start bleaching, they, they talk, they start maybe to bleach their skin. They start to get perms. The mess of their woolly hair, they try to get their hair more straight, like the so-called white woman. And the reason why people do this is because we've been programmed to think that white is right. White is pure. So that's why people, some of our girls, sisters get blonde hair in their head. It's why some of our people want to bleach their skin because we've been taught here in America that you know white skin and being white is pure and you... So-called black is nasty, dirty. That's why everything that is so-called black is bad. And everything that's so-called white is right. Like you got devil cake. You got angel cake. Angel cake is white. Devil cake is black. Um, when, when, when you see a black cat, people say, um, I think they say it's like a curse. Or they stay away from black cats. They're scared of black cats. Right? When you playing pool, right? I got this from a brother watching the video. I forgot who said it. Um... I'm thinking it was Malcolm X, but I could be wrong. Oh, no, I think it was um, f um, Dr. Francis, Francis Chris. It was somebody that said it. But when you're playing pool, right, you got to stay away from the black ball. If you hit the black ball in, that's game over. If you, hit, if you hit the black ball, it's game over, right? So you got to try to stay away from the black ball. So it's like everything that is black, they make it to be death. Why you wear death? Why you wear black to a funeral and you wear white to a wedding? A funeral is something that you mourning and crying and sad. You're wearing black. But when you go to a, a wedding, you're wearing white. So they program us to think that we're bad. We're wrong. We're nasty. We're evil. I seen the video, right? Um, and I'll put the link in the description if I don't forget. I seen a video of... These people, right, they got kids. They had a black baby doll and they had a white baby doll. And they got some kids to, um, to sit down in front of the white baby dolls. And they would ask them a question. Which one is the ugly doll? They were choosing the black doll. Which one is the nice doll? They were choosing the white doll. They was like, which one? They was like, which one, um, which one is the mean doll? And one of the sisters, the younger sisters, she pointed at the black doll. And the person asked them, why is, why is that doll mean? And then the sister was like, because it's black. So they program us from the from the youth up to make us think that our skin and us being black is wrong. So that's why people grow up and want to marry the so-called white people. And they want to dress like them and act like them and talk like them. Because we've been programmed to think that that's, that's the, um, the way we have to be to make it in America. Right? So a lot of our people coon. They start to coon. And want to and start to join hand in hand with their oppressor. Want to be like their oppressor. Want to talk like their oppressor. They start to coon. When they around their own people, they they mean mugging their own people. They talk under their breath about their own people. But when they get around the other nations, they want to skip, hop, and dance. You know what I'm saying? Because they cooning. They want to be like them because they think that's right. So 
This video is for our brothers and sisters, man, to separate from your enemies. Because the Most High God made you royal. The Most High God made you superior. You're not like these other nations. You're not like the so-called white race, the East Indian race, the Chinese race, the Japanese race. You should be offended. You should be offended when people talk, when people want to tell you black man and woman, uh, uh, Hispanic man, woman, uh, and Native Indian man and woman. You should be offended when somebody try to tell y'all that y'all that um that you're equal to the other nations. That's an insult. That's an insult. But we don't look at it like that because we've been taught here in America that we all equal, that everybody the same. We all bleed red, so that makes us equal, which don't make sense. We all bleed red. That's what makes us equal. God don't see color. It ain't no color in heaven. We've been taught these things, so we think. When, when, when people say that, when we say that we are above all nations, right, and that the Most High God separated us to be the best, people look at us as being racist. But no, that's the truth. Let's get that real quick. That's the truth of the Bible. It's the, it's the, it's the fact about the Bible. The Most High God, he made the Israelites to be above all nations of people. So it ain't no equality in the Most High God eyes. Maybe in America eyes, but in the Most High God eyes, it ain't no equality because he made the Israelites... Above all nations and made us a special people. It's Deuteronomy 76. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Most High God said he made the Israelites a special people. A chosen people above all people that's upon the face of the earth. So that's no equality. Now, I'm going to show you that he separated the Israel. Like he separated us among all these nations. So you shouldn't try to be like these other nations. These other nations should be wanting to try to be like you. You should be wanting to, you should be keeping these commandments and these other nations try to be like you. You shouldn't try to drop down low and be like these other nations, man. When you are the chosen one, you are the chosen of God. It's Leviticus 20 and 24. But I have said unto you, you shall inherit their land. And I will give it unto you a, to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. And I am the Lord your God, which has separated you from other people. So the Most High God, he separated Israel from all these other nations. Like he basically handpicked Israel. And he pulled, just say all the nations was in one pot. And he picked up Israel out of the pot and put them by themselves. That's what he did. He separated us, man. So when you get, when you marry these other nations, and when you, you know what I'm saying, forget about your people and want to join hand in hand to try to save these other nations, you don't understand how low you're stooping, right? Because people get, people don't understand, I be telling our brothers and sisters this, but they don't understand when they interracial marriage, right? A sister, right? A so-called black sister, right? She get with a so-called white man. She don't understand what she's doing. She don't, under, she don't, she don't know the history about where these people come from. They come from the Caucasus Mountain. Or George of Russia. That's why they call themselves Caucasians because they come from the Caucasus Mountains. So you're dating a cave beast. If we're being honest, you're dating a, 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 a caveman. That's why they get the, the Flintstones from. You know what I'm saying? Them, them, uh, them uh, people, the, Flint, the Flintstones, I ain't seen it in a long time. But um, that's where they get that from, man. They get that from the history. That's why they call themselves Caucasians. So our sisters are are dropping down real low to the bottom of the pole when you get with a so-called white man, a so-called white woman, because these people come from the caves. Understand, we gotta know these history, you gotta know this history, man. You you you're getting with the you're getting with your slave master, if I'm being honest. That, that's what it is, man. So the most high God was like, hey, separate yourself. Don't be getting with these other nations. Why would you get with why would you get with a peasant? Why would you get with a, a slave? A slave in, in the kingdom to come. Why would you get with them? You are the chosen one. You ain't never seen no movie. You ain't never seen no movie when the queen get with a peasant. In no, in no princess royal movie, when a, when, a, when a princess, she go get with a peasant. Or a king, he go get with a peasant. No. So why would you do that? But our people, our people just don't know. Our people don't know. So we have to come on here and, and, and shed light to our people and shed this truth because nobody else is going to do it. You see what I'm saying? Nobody else is going to do it. So let me get this.
It's Proverbs chapter 11, verse 21. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. So this, this is the most high God. He said, though you join hand in hand, um, which are like America push equality, you join in hand in hand with these other nations, with these other races. The Bible said, though you doing that, right, though you um marry these other nations, though you, you go out, you know, y'all go out to eat together at the work. Y'all look at each other's brothers. Y'all give each other big hugs, give each other kisses on the cheek. Y'all really carry love for each other, right? The Bible said, though hand join in hand, though y'all want to come together and say love. We have to, that's the only way that we're going to uh, defeat the hate is the love and come together. We have to come together. We can't be separate. Though you think like that and move like that, the Bible said, um, the, the, the wicked should not be unpunished. So a lot of our people think that Come, trying to come together with the chiefly, it's all the other nations, but chiefly so-called white races, because that's what our people seem to care about the most is the so-called white man and woman. But we seem to come to, our people think when we come together with them, they're going to stop beating us in the head with a brick. They think that love is going to stop, they think that treating love and coming together with them is going to um, stop them from hating us and from calling us niggas and stop them from hanging us and killing us. They think that that's gonna. They think that that's the cure to stop racism, basically. But the Bible said, "Hey man, do you join hand in hand? The Most High God, they forget about what they did to you. Our people want to forget about that. They want to come hand in hand with the oppressor, and they want to forget about slavery. They want to forget about segregation. They want to forget about the trail of tears. They want to forget about all that stuff that was that happened to our people when they come together with their oppressor. But the Most High God said, though you join hand to hand with them, because that's that what a lot of our people do. Uh, you, you see, you see, it may be a uh, so-called white person that's dancing and they singing and they may sing good. And you see somebody, the first thing you see in the comments is some, one of our brothers and sisters saying they're invited to the cookout. Oh, she invited to the cookout because she can sing. But what that's what I'm thinking. Our people are too. Our people accept and forgive too easy when it comes to other nations, though. But when it comes to their own people, they, they, they hold in grudges for five years. Right? They, they don't want to accept their people in. But when it comes to the other nations, oh, you, they quit to say you invited to the cookout. So just because that person can sing and maybe can dance, boom, they invited to the cookout now. You inviting them to your space. That's crazy, but that's our people, man. Our people are loving when it comes to the other nations, but when it comes to their own people, they hate their own people and call their people ops. But that's that was the plan of the so-called white man. When you read Psalms eighty-three um, and two through six, that was the plan of the so-called white man. He he planned that to separate us and for us to hate each other. That's why we're trying to wake our people up and get our people to come out that mind state. But he said, yeah, man. So. Uh, the wicked not gonna go unpunished. So though you interrate, don't though you marry them in interracial marriage with them, you think that that's gonna you know make things better. It's not because they, they still gonna have to pay for what they did to you and your people. You may have somebody say, well, you may have a so called black woman that may be married to a white man. She may say, well, my husband didn't do that. My husband had no parts in, in slavery or segregation. He wasn't even born yet, right? His his he didn't have nothing to do with that. Right, you may a lot of people say that. Well, my friend didn't have nothing to do with slavery, right? She ha she's not racist, right? Her stepbrother's black, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's not racist. I'm her friend, so she can't be racist. So she shouldn't have to pay for what her uncle or her great 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 granddad did. She shouldn't have to pay for how her uncle feels about black people because she's not racist. She didn't do nothing. She didn't steal from me. She didn't rob me. So we should just forgive her. If it was up to our people, if God gave our people a choice to either avenge these nations for what they've done to us or to just forgive them and forget about it, a lot of our people would just tell the, tell the Lord, hey, just forget about it, Lord. I mean, it was, it was a long time ago. It was, I mean, we're not in chains no more. Right? They, they, they let us, they let us um, work now. We can read now. They give us a roof over our head. So just forget about it, Lord. Just have mercy on the Lord. If it was up to our people, they would be saying that. That's why he didn't give our people the option to choose that. So you have people say, well, they didn't do that. So they should have to pay for what their forefathers did. But understand this. I'm going to get that verse too. But understand this, right? If you, write, if you read the Bible, you have righteous men. You have righteous men have to, get, have to go through slavery 
had to be in captivity for what their nation, for what their nation of people did, because the Lord judged them as the nation of people. So we get judged for what our forefathers did. Our forefathers broke the covenant of God. They broke the commandments. So we still getting judged for what they did. Thousands and thousands of years ago, we still getting that punishment right now. So what make these other nations think that they've been giving God's people hell for 400 plus years, giving us hell? And they think that they the Lord going to forget about that. And they're not even God's chosen people. The Lord literally punished his chosen people for their iniquities. So what make you think our people that's not his people? That he's, what make you think that he's not going to punish them for how they treated his people? It don't make sense. You got a price to pay, man. It's Isaiah 14 and 21. Prepare slaughter for his children. Now, this is, this is prophecy. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. So the Bible said, hey, prepare slaughter for, the, for, their, for their children. Prepare slaughter for their seed line. So the Bible said that although you're trying to join hand in hand with these nations, although they may have not physically themselves put you in slavery, they still have to pay for what their forefathers did the same way we paying for what our forefathers did and we didn't do nothing. And they're benefiting. They are benefiting off of the rape, rob, and murder that their forefathers did. They are benefiting off of it. If you even if you a so called white person and in, in, in you even in America, you, you that's that's benefiting. If you go to college, you got a, a college education, you got your own business, if you got your own land, you're benefiting off of what your forefathers did because they stole this land. Right? They got all this stuff they got from rape, rob, and murder. And you're and you're in America, you're a proud American, right? You got your American flag shirt on, you're celebrating Fourth of July, you're popping fireworks, you got an American flag in your yard. You hey man, you're benefiting off of what your forefathers did. That's that you're benefiting. All the, you got a 400 year head start. You have a 400 year head start, you know what I'm saying, on black and Hispanics because everything that we had was stolen and taken away from us. That's why I be saying if you if you a so-called um, white person in America and you poor or you living like kind of average, you're not you're not rich. You're not rich. You kind of have what you kind of making it and you, you may be poor. The Bible said, I mean, not the Bible, but I said that you a two-time loser, man. You a two-time loser. And the reason why I say that, because how in the world are you poor in your kingdom? How, how are you poor? Your forefathers literally worked hard. They literally went, they literally worked hard raping people. They worked hard robbing people, robbing people, stealing everything from everybody. To make this country for you, make you prosper in this country. How are you poor? I mean, your, your forefathers and foremothers would, would be turning in their grave right now if they seen you on the side of the street with a cup begging for five dollars with a sign, talking about some. Can you loan me five dollars? I need a place to stay. You barely making it. You in the you in the, you in the trailer park. You ain't you ain't filthy rich. You ain't in no mansion or nothing. You ain't got boohoo's of money, but you, you know, you kind of, you middle class. They turning in their grave right now. They're like, what the hell is going on? I did all this rape, robbing, murder, murdering, right? I did all this stealing to make this country a place for my people, make this place a heaven for my people, and you poor. That, 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 don't, make, that, don't, that don't make no sense, man. I'm not giving you no money. That's a shame, man. That, 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 how are you poor in America? If your forefathers seen you, they probably come out of that grave and slap you. All this stuff I done did. I done been stealing for you. I done been robbing for you. I made this country what it is for you. And you poor? They're going to disown, they disown you. They ain't going to want nothing to do with you no more. And, and we know that this is the so-called white people's heaven. This is their heaven, man. And this is our hell. What they say, a white man's heaven is a black man's hell. That's true. This is their heaven. This is how we know this is their heaven because who faces, on, who faces on the money? Is our face on the money? Who in these, who, who live in the, all these nice neighborhoods with the big houses and things like that? Who live in the skyscrapers and all them, them tall buildings? Who face you see on these Bible movies, who who do you see playing Jesus? Who you see playing Paul? Who you see playing um Daniel in these movies? Who do you mostly see 
being um, the owner of these businesses, who you work for. This is they heaven, man. Everything is white is right. When they advertising, so when they when you seeing these models in these uh, magazines on these commercials, when they advertising some hairspray or some uh, or some skincare, who face do you see on the screen? A so called white woman with pale skin, with probably blue or brown eyes, with blonde uh, uh with blonde or brown hair. This is their heaven, man. Everything is so called white here. This is white supremacy. So how are you poor in America and you also going to be poor in the kingdom of heaven because the kingdom of heaven is going to be ran by the Israelites. So you a two time loser. You're not ruling the yoke kingdom and you're not going to rule in the kingdom to come. So the Bible said that they have to pay for what their forefathers did, man, because you're benefiting. You get the you get the your forefathers paved the way for you to benefit from a year head start. He pay, they paved the way for you. To prosper here in America, man. And a lot of a lot of times they still have that, that they still have that hate inside them like their forefathers got. Right? That's why racism is never going to end. You have people trying to stop racism. It's never going to end because that hate get passed on through the blood. And their children, children are gonna hate you, man. They're gonna be envious, envious, and jealous of you. It's gonna continue to come. It's not gonna end. All don't matter how much love you try to give them, it don't matter how many, how many times you try to march with them. Try to hug them, invite them to the cookout. It's not going to change the fact that they got to pay for what their forefathers did. It doesn't, it's not going to change the fact, man. It said, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. And I always say this, it's like their forefathers left them a tab to pay. You say you go to a restaurant and eat, right? And you, go, you say you got to go to the bathroom. It's time to pay and you got to go to the bathroom. And you come back and the people that you ate with, gone. So now you got to pay for the tab because they gone. It's the same thing about, um, about this judgment. Their forefathers and all the things that they did, they did. But their descendants are still here on this earth. And they're going to have to pay for all the things that they did. That's, that's, that says the Lord, man. So my thing is why I brought this out was, brothers and sisters, you want to join hand in hand with your oppressor. You're going to get that same judgment that they get. The most high God going to look at you like a, like a coon. Like, why are you hanging with your oppressor and I'm going to give them their judgment? That's just like, you know, you, um, that's just like somebody do a drive by shooting, right? Just say somebody doing a drive by shooting on the person that they hate, they, that they so-called op. But they're trying to do a drive by shooting on their op, right? And just say it's another person that's hanging with the dude that they finna try to kill. Now, the person that's hanging with him, he a, he a good dude. He get A's in school, right? He, in, he, on, he on the band team. Uh, <clears throat> he ain't did no wrong, right? The teachers love him. But he hanging around that dude, right? He may think the dude cool that he hanging with. He a nice guy and things like that. But the people that's doing the job out shooting, they not going to think or care nothing about, well, that we're not going to shoot him because he in the band. And he, he may be a good dude. No, they going to shoot you and that other dude because they going to look at you as an op too because you hanging with him. You hanging with him, so they're going to look at you like, okay, he an op too, we're going to kill him too. Even though he wasn't an op. He was an A-plus student in the band. But they killed him because he was hanging with other dudes. So that's how the most high God going to be, how he going to look at it. When he come back to deliver you from your enemies, when, I mean, when Yahweh Shai come back and deliver you from your enemies, um, he going to look at you like, dang, how am I supposed to save this person? If I'm coming, if I'm coming back to save this person from his enemies... And he hanging and joining hand to hand with his enemies. What can I do with that? How can I save this so-called black or Hispanic person out of America when they love America? They're a proud American. So how can I save this person out of this country? He's not. You're going to get that same punishment and judgment that these heathens get, man. And I know you so-called black and Hispanics don't want that. Right? Because we, we, this is our, he coming back to save us. So I would, I would hate to see you get killed with your oppressors. And you miss your ride when you when you when you could have been got saved, but you want to be hand in hand with your oppressor. The Lord say, man, he not dealing with that. So let me get this real quick. Yeah, so they they got they got a price to pay, man. If you join hand to hand with them, you want to get their same judgment, which is death and destruction. This is Isaiah thirteen and fifteen. It says, "Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, 
and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So the Bible said, if you join hand to hand with your oppressor when Christ returns, you're you going to get through me. You're going to get killed. You're going you gonna to fall by the sword. And even before Christ come back, you're going to be getting killed. Why? Because race wars are going to happen. I'm, I'm going to bring a verse on that. Race wars are coming to the earth real soon, man. That's what we tell our people to separate from their oppressor. And we know that we in America, we know that we have to deal with them. Right. We have to you, you may have to deal with them because you may work with them and things like that. But that doesn't mean that you have to join hand to hand with them. Right. Y'all doing everything together at the work. Y'all becoming best of friends. No, that don't mean that. Right. Because when you're doing that, when you're acting like that, the most high guys are going to be thrust through and race wars are going to happen. And, um, our people that our brothers and sisters are going to see when they in these interracial marriages, they're going to see. The true colors of their uh, spouses, that's of the other nations. They're going to see the true color of them because when these race wars kick off, and the Bible speaks on this, when race wars kick off and these uh, these people go back to their own nation, their own people, they're not going to accept you, man. Because when Jacob's trouble kick off, when Jacob's trouble kick off, um, it's going to be a hard time for the Israelites. That's why it's called Jacob's trouble. Right, it's gonna be the time where the Israelites catch complete hell because they're gonna find out that we God's people and they're gonna to try to kill us and things like that. So these other nations that surround it, they're gonna see. They also gonna see that we God's people, and they also gonna see how these other nations are trying to give us hell, and they're gonna to try to separate from us because they know if they with us during that time, they're gonna get put to death too and catch hell. So, you know, if you you in these interracial marriages and things like that, when when these when a race wars kick off. These people going to go for their own people and they're going to push you out of the way. They're not going to allow you to come with them. Right. Because you're going to be a threat to them and they people and they families. So they're not going to allow you to come over there with them. So you have to pick a side. Are you going to be with the, the heathens or are you going to be with your people? And it, it ain't no in between. It ain't no I'm, I'm, I'm in between because that's you're going to get put. You're going to get that's putting That's getting put to death. Right, because your own your people, some of your people might look at you as an enemy and a traitor, and they're gonna kill you. And if you try to go with the other side, the other nation, they're gonna kill you, right? Because they're gonna look at you as a um a damn uh, a, a a nigga. And that, that's facts. You gonna if you don't believe me, you're gonna see it. Right? You don't gotta believe nothing I'm saying, but you're gonna see this stuff take place right before your eyes, and you're gonna you gonna see and you're gonna remember this video when it happens. But it's Matthew 24 and 7. It says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdoms. So nations are going to rise against nations and kingdom against kingdoms. So you're going to have race wars kicking off and all hell break loose. You're going to have a race. Watch the purge. Watch the purge. They put it right in your eyes. You know how you have different people linking up together during the purge. You had all these groups come together to kill other people. That's what's going to happen in the purge, man. It's going to be races. Rising up against nations. I mean, races, king, nations rising against nations, meaning races rising against races. You will have kingdoms rising against kingdoms, which going to start World War Three. All these kingdoms going to rise up against each other. And they're going to chiefly rise up against America and destroy America. But this is going to happen, man. You're going to see the people that you grew up with of the other nations, the other races. You may have white friends. You're going to see the true colors when things start to hit the fan. Right now, you don't see it because everything going good. You ain't never, you ain't never really made them mad, right? You um, everything just going smooth, right? But when this stuff kick off, and you start getting looked at as a target, and people start going back to their own nations, all right? It ain't gonna be no more. That, that's my friend. It ain't gonna be no more. That's my that's my husband, right? I love him. And y'all may y'all may be married for twenty years. You may have been friends since you may have been friends with this white girl since elementary school. Right. But when all hell break loose and these race wars start kicking off, you're going to see people true colors. All that best friend and husband and that's my stepmom and all that stuff going to be out the window. That's why the Bible said, hey, when you get found with them, you're going to get thrust through. Everybody joined the hand in hand with them going to get put to death. That's why you have to separate and come back and start loving your own people, man. And start keeping these commandments. So that's what's going to save you. Yahweh is going to be the only person that's going to be able to save you um, when all hell breaks loose, when these race wars kick off. You must keep these commandments because you already hate it right now. You know what I'm saying? You are you already uh, 
you already hate it right now, and this and, um, and people look down upon you right now. So just imagine when all hell break loose and all race wars kick off. Your husband, if you if you're a so-called black woman, you got a white husband, he's not gonna, he's not gonna come on, babe, come on. No, all oh, that's gonna be out the window. He's gonna try to save himself and go save his people. And you're gonna see that. If you don't believe what I'm saying, what the Bible's saying, you're gonna see it very, very soon. You're gonna, you're gonna see it very soon, man. All these nations, they're gonna they're gonna despise and hate you. So, Lord when this video is edifying, man. This this a, this is a warning. A warning to brothers and sisters to tell you, bro, to separate from your enemies, man. Stop trying to be hand to hand and try to marry them and try to be buddy buddy with them. Try to save them from their judgment. No, it's not going to happen, man. The Lord is going to going to give them their judgment. And if you found joining hand to hand with them when the Lord giving them their judgment, you gonna get the same thing they get. And I wouldn't want that out if I was you. So repent and keep these commandments and separate from your enemies. So with that, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Shimi Hawashai. I say Shalom.